So we have the final section of the poem, which we're going to call the conclusion. We're going to try and work out the shift in the poet's perspective. But I think you're already probably developing an understanding of what that might be and how it functions as a criticism of this passive speaker. But it really is, in terms of tension, the climax of the poem, because we end in, in suspense. So in terms of actual narrative structure, this poem ends on a climax, but in terms of its actual um, formal layout, this is the conclusion of the poem. And so we see this, we see this, this shift signaled with this phrase, and then a very um, gentle reminder that the focus is shifting to the speaker. And then, one evening, so as a consequence of all of this that has occurred, as I sat down to eat my yam, and this, in many ways, is an element of the structure, because this is a rewriting of the refrain. Refrain is rewritten here. As I sat down to eat my yam, a knock on the door froze my hungry hand. And this rewriting of the refrain is deliberately ironic. At the moment where this man is about to eat the yam that has been the thing that has persuaded him to take no interest in, in the fate of his presumably close friends or relatives, it's at that moment that they come for him. A knock on the door froze my hungry hand. Now, there's a lot going on in this particular line. It's the knock on the door that froze his hand. And so here we have this sense of personification. But it's the knock itself that's personified. And it creates this freezing of his hungry hand. He stopped in the action of eating, which has been what has caused his Passivity all the way through. So the personification on, of the, the knock on the door and its consequences, it freezes his hungry hand, gives us a sense here of um, the dramatic fear that this creates. It freezes his hand because of fear, but also a sense of surprise that creates, I think, the irony that we're talking about here, it's a type of dramatic irony where we can all see this coming and that this person, this speaker in the poem, couldn't. He couldn't see what was going on and what was coming for him. And then we have the hungry hand. That This hand itself is <clears throat> ultimately the source of his passivity. It's his hungry hand his willingness to, to take a passive role because of his own, probably because of his own poverty and his hunger, that here is frozen by fear. So this is the moment where there is a dramatic reversal. And I think that's very gently suggested by that rare moment of alliteration here. The alliteration that's, that is quite what we would call breathy. It's again, that's not a formal terminology, but the alliteration of the letter H, hungry hand, almost suggests, I think, fear. Because it, as you say it, it takes your breath away. It, it's fear and breathless as a sound. It throws my hungry hand. And then we have this ominous final image. And the Jeep was waiting on my bewildered lawn, waiting waiting in its usual silence. And there's another example of personification here. The bewildered lawn. So now elements of his house are being personified. So the house is guilty of the same lack of awareness that he displays. The, the lawn is bewildered. It's surprised by what it's, it's, it's confused and surprised by this sudden entry of the, of the military um, police. And, and it's almost as if the house has been infected by the speaker's passive, confused approach. And it's the Jeep was waiting. So the Jeep again is personified. There's an enormous sort of number of usages of this in the end of this poem. 
The Jeep is waiting, which again shows us the faceless nature of the danger. We don't know who's in it. We just see this Jeep and it makes it more mysterious and, and more um, fearful because it's faceless. We can't put a face to who's causing these, these acts of atrocity. And then the very final line. The, the repetition is, is incredibly sinister because there's a sense in this repetition, I think, of confidence, but also of it having been there all the time. Because it's in its usual silence. And we see that this then is a habit but, at the same time, paradoxically, he's surprised by this, and so is the lawn. He, the lawn is bewildered. So he is paradoxically surprised by the fact that it is waiting in its usual silence. There's another way to read this, though, in terms of ambiguity. So this final line is ambiguous. Because it suggests that he hasn't realised yet. He hasn't realised what's about to happen. It's waiting in its usual signs. Oh yeah, here it is again. And there's a sense again of almost type of dramatic irony and ambiguity in that final line. Because we think from the line, a knock on the door froze my hungry hand. We think there's a sense of, of developing awareness and fear in that line. But then this very final line and its usual silence suggests that it's a habit and that he's either paradoxically surprised or the other side of that ambiguity that he hasn't even realised. And that's what creates this uneasy conclusion to the poem where we're not sure if he realises what's coming for him. <laughs>